York this. Mets starting pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> Our old pal Tommy Glavin. Tommy Boomer and Craig in New York. How you been, buddy? I'm good. I don't mind that introduction. That's all right. Nah, you don't like it. Let's be honest. <laughs> we had Smoltzy in studio uh, last week. And oh, said, that had to be painful. It was painful. No personality at all. You know John. And yeah. <laughs> he goes, when Glavin comes on, introduce him as a former Met. He really likes that. He loves that, yeah. <laughs> How you been, Tommy? I'm good. Uh, things are good, you know. Um, settled into retirement. Uh, busier now than I was when I was playing, running around with all my kids. But right. uh, life is good. So uh, no Hard to be retired. You miss it at all, like if you see a big ball game on TV, a big matchup, or are you completely uh, comfortable as a retired athlete? You know, I have to say, for the most part, completely comfortable. Um, you know, I think most guys will tell you, uh, and I'm probably no different in that regard, you know, you miss the competition aspect of it. I mean, if there was, in a perfect world, if, um, you know, you could play until you were 100 and all it was was about going out there and playing that game that one day, uh, then it wouldn't be so bad. But uh, when you're having to deal with all the stuff in between and the traveling and, you know, dealing with media and all that crazy stuff sometimes, that's the part that you don't miss. But it's it's hard to recreate that competitive juice that you have when you go out there to play a game. But uh, aside from that, no, I mean um, – I, I enjoy being home. I enjoy being around my wife and my kids, and I'm having fun watching them do their thing, so everything's good. Hey, Tom, what is your take on the success that R.A. Dickey has had here, especially this season, 11-1, and one, uh, doing things with a knuckleball? I don't think I, I've never seen before. I, you know, we had John Smoltz in here and got his take on it. What do you think? You know, I don't know. Look, I mean, when you have a year like that, it's hard to explain what was different from one year to the next. You know, I know, uh, you know, for me personally, I look back over my career and I look at uh, – you know, the two years that I won the Cy Young Award, and obviously, obviously those are years when things go well. Uh, are things that much different than they were maybe the years before? Honestly, not all that much. I mean, I think you can point to making better pitches on a consistent basis. Maybe you can point to uh, feeling like you're a little bit more locked in more often. Um, but then when you really start to look at it, it sometimes it boils down to that. Plus, hey, every time you make a mistake, they hit the ball at somebody. Or uh, every time you make a mistake, maybe they swing and they miss versus hitting a line drive somewhere. And, and you know, that's that's the difference a lot of times between going well and not going well. When you make mistakes, you get away with it. When, you, when, you, when you're not going well and you make mistakes, you don't get away with it. But, you know, it's that kind of thing when you're in the middle of that kind of year, you just keep going with it and you let it roll and see how far it will go. And certainly in R.A.'s case, so far this year has been phenomenal. And, and you know, for everybody, that knows his story, uh, I think they they root for him because he's a hard guy not to root for. Yeah, you're right. I mean, have you ever seen anybody throw a knuckleball like he does? No, I haven't. You know, I mean, most guys, uh, you know, they have that one-speed tumbler that just kind of floats up there, and it's a matter of is it going to break or not. But R.A. seems to be able to do more with it. He seems to use his other pitches a little bit more as well. Um, so, you know, he's he's kind of reinventing it a little bit. And, and you know, I don't know that uh, – I still don't know it's going to be the pitch that people rush out to learn how to throw, but uh, he certainly gives hope to the guys out there that are, that are going down that path and trying to do that. I mean, he's been extremely successful now and, and uh, you know like I say good good for the Mets and good for baseball let me mention that Tom Glavins here with club and his Twitter handle is uh, at Tom underscore Glavin and uh, his charity your charity Tom is uh, the cure childhood cancer dot org and you you and a lot of other very well known uh, you know female softball players like Jenny Finch and former major league players have uh, set up this uh, club Diamond Nation which is a virtual uh, experience online where people can get great uh, tips on how to play baseball also, every now and then, maybe interact directly with you guys. And where it's also a bit of a popularity contest because whichever one of these guys or gals involved with the website, Boomer, is voted as the most popular, their charity will get a $15,000 donation while everyone else will get at least 2500 bucks. So look at you. You're a big entrepreneur. you got more money than Moses, and you can't stop. <laughs> right? Hey, it's not about that. It's about reaching out to the kids and helping them learn the game. That's what it's about. So, But, no, this is a great opportunity. I mean, Club Diamond Nation's a... Uh, you know, it's a neat opportunity. Um, it's an, it, it's a chance 
to really tap into something that I think a lot of people have looked at, but nobody's really figured out yet. You know, the Internet is so broad-based. There's so many people you can get to. Uh, and, and with the game of baseball, there's so many kids playing the game internationally uh, that that's what this is trying to do, is trying to reach as many kids uh, as possible who are either playing baseball or softball or interested in baseball or softball and, and want to learn how to get better. So it's an opportunity for myself and Barry Larkin, Jenny Finch, and, and, uh, and a couple others to yep. not only reach out to these kids through, you know, maybe messages, inspirational messages, that kind of thing, but also the opportunity to uh, have them view some video on certain aspects of the game. You know, for me, obviously, whether it's pitching or or mechanics or thinking through the game, things like that, all things that, that kids can access in an instant uh, to try and help make themselves better. And, you know, and it's funny, Tom, be, you know, there's a day like when you and I are about the same age, Boomer's a little bit older than us, there was a day when, you know, if you want to learn how to play baseball, you got on your bicycle, you went to the sandlot, there were nine kids out there waiting to play with you, and you figured out how to play. You know, it is amazing. You do need sites like this now because half the kids, I don't know about, I assume your kids too play, play baseball, but I bet you the majority of their friends aren't playing the way we played growing up, right? No, they're not. It's a different world nowadays, unfortunately. You're right. I mean, uh, you know, I, I think back to my childhood, and it was uh, in the fall, there was uh, 15 of us playing a street hockey game or a football game, and in the spring, we were all at the at the end of the cul-de-sac and threw bases down on the, on the hot top, and we were playing baseball. So, I mean, there's not as much of that nowadays, and, you know, to be honest with you, as a parent, uh, I'm a little afraid letting my kid walk off and go somewhere, because in this age, sure. age you never know if they're coming well, back. So, you know, the good news yeah. is that Boomer just signed up and he voted for you, so you got one vote closer. You know, by the way, we all know Jenny Finch is going to win. Because oh, of course. She's, so much she's getting the male and the female vote. Hey, folks. let me so ask you this. Um, yeah, you know, we've talked to you over the years here since Boom and I started five years ago. I don't know if I've ever asked you this direct question. You know, everyone remembers, of course, your final start, you know, uh, back in 07 when we needed the big win. He just had probably the worst day of your life as a starting pitcher. Do you have any regrets about your time playing for the Mets? And if you could do it again, would you have decided to have not come to play for the Mets? Uh, no, I, I would have. I would have. I wouldn't do. I wouldn't change a thing. Um, I would change that last game. Of course. Uh, I wish that would have ended differently. Uh, but in between, uh, you know, my first game there was awful. My last game there was awful. Everything in between uh, was a lot of fun. Now that's not to say I didn't have other struggles. I did. I mean, you know, uh, it's not the easiest place to play. Uh, and I, you know, when people ask me that very question, my answer is: Look, I had a. I had a good time playing in New York. It was fun. It was fun for my family. It was a great experience for me as a player to see something different and see that city in a different way. Um, but as a player, it's it's tough because there's no better place to play when you're doing well, and there's no worse place to be when you're not. And you know what I always tell people is you try your best as a player to stay on that good side because that 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 part of it is really good. When you're not going good, uh, it can be tough. But Look, I think by and large people up there were very fair to me. I think the media was very fair to me, and I think that in part was because I was always accessible and fair, and fair with them. I didn't try and hide when I had a bad game. Right. I didn't try and make excuses, and I think – as long as you treat people that way and you're honest, then I think for the most part people will respect you and what you're trying to do. They may not like what you're doing as an athlete, and that's fine. You know, I mean, I'm no different. I mean, I have my guys that I like, and I get mad when they don't have a good game and uh, things of that nature. But, you know, it, it, it was a great experience. Um, I'm happy that I did it. It was a tough decision, no question about it. But once I got there and got settled, um, it was a good experience for me and my family and, and certainly something that I'm happy that I had the opportunity to do. Tom Glavin joins us for a few more minutes. You know, the interesting thing, Tom, is that this uh, current edition of the New York Mets team is surprising everybody. And given all the success that you've had throughout your career with all the great teammates, do you think there's a real chance that the Mets can sustain this with guys like Lucas Duda and Ike Davis and Jordani Baldespin and, and Nguyen Heist and all guys that are just kind of cutting their teeth trying to make their way in the uh, major leagues? You know, from my standpoint, and I'm sure from uh, some of the guys in that clubhouse, the answer would be, why not? You know, it happens every year. There, there's, you know, as much as everybody sits down and tries to figure out who's going to win each division, who's going to be the World Series, no matter what, inevitably every year there's a team that everybody come the All-Star break scratches their head and says, where did these guys come from? So, and, and, you know, I was a part of a team like that in 1991. So 
it happens every year, particularly in baseball. There's that surprise team, and, and I guarantee you with with each passing week, with each passing month that the Mets look up and they see themselves still in the thick of things, they believe more and more that they can do it. And I, and I think that those guys in that locker room believe more and more. And, look, as long as they're getting good starting pitching, they're going to have a chance to win. And, and you know, that's kind of the case for them right now. And, you know, Terry Collins has done a nice job with them. Uh, I think he's a good fit for the, there for those guys. It certainly doesn't help that, I mean, doesn't hurt that David Wright's having a great year. So, you know, all that stuff helps. But I think if you look at their lineup offensively, those guys you just mentioned, there's some people in baseball that, that look at that core of guys and are excited about those guys. But you're right. The, un, the unknown is, mm-hmm. can they sustain it? Are they going to continue to grow and become better players? And that's the part you don't ever know. But I guarantee you, the, the more these guys hang around, the more the, the more they believe in themselves and the better they're going to get. By the way, go to ClubDiamondNation.com. Vote for your favorite Club Diamond Nation star. Uh, at least 15000 bucks to go to his or her selected charity. Uh, the other four charities involved with the guys involved will get a minimum of 2500 bucks. So you look at a nice $25,000 total donation. Hey, by the way, Smoltzy was telling us when you guys came to New York, when you remember the Braves, if you were not pitching that day, you guys would wake up and hit the golf courses every single trip to New York. Could you hold your own against them or no? Uh, you know what? There were times where I could. You know, he's he's clearly better than me. Um, but you know, that's that's what the handicap system's all about. So, uh, you know, I got it in his pocket every now and then. But we did. We I tell you what, I used to. It was funny when I first started coming to New York. I hated it. I did. It was too busy for me. It was hard to get around. I didn't like it. But once we kind of started playing golf, and that became more of a of a part of what we did on the road, and you got out and got to see some places in New York, I loved it. And it was a great golf trip. And uh, you know, we certainly had a lot of fun over the years. Well. Doing all that. Do you and, get uh, do you get to New York much now? Because Boom and I have uh, every week we have a private, you know, celebrity only yeah. uh, golf game. It's me and a guest versus Boomer and a guest, and Boomer's called dibs on Smoltz. So if you're up in New York, <laughs> I mean, I need somebody, right. Tommy. I'm over hey, four this year. I'm always looking for a reason to get up there. So uh, if if I can make it happen, I'll be sure and let you guys know, and we'll get out and do it. Well, I'll throw you on hold after this. Uh, we'll trade numbers, and we'll see if we can get you because it, get you up here because <laughs> nothing would give me more pleasure than beating Smoltz <laughs> and Boomer on the golf course. Yeah, you know, the chance of that happening is very slim. Why don't you just tell Tommy, you know, basically what the record is right now? I am 0 for 4 this year. Right. Oh boy. And I, John Starks, you know, the former Nick playing for with me uh, two weeks ago, shot a 76, and I still lost. Still lost. Oh, still it's lost. brutal, dude. Yeah. Wow. Wow, By the way, good. of all the things you accomplished in your storied career, you won a Cy Young, you won, of course, a World Series, you uh, more than 300-game winner. Of course, you did that uh, with the New York Mets at the end of your career. Would you not agree with me that the single greatest accomplishment of your career is being a multiple Silver Slugger Award winner? Oh, without question. Uh, you know, I mean, that's the argument I have with uh, with Chip and Joe every time I do games for the Braves. I mean, right. the pitchers are the athletes on the field. I mean, that's, that's, that's what it's about. So, you know, look, the, we're, we get paid to pitch, but trust me, we want to brag about our hitting. So, no, yeah, the four we, silver sluggers is a good thing. Also, something else you can brag about, that your former hockey team, the one that drafted you, won the Stanley Cup this year. I know. Had I signed with them, they would have done it a lot sooner. So, I'm, I'm a little bit sorry about that, that they had to wait so long. But, uh, no, it was good to see, you know. Well, again, it's it's uh, that's the kind of thing that's good for hockey. You like seeing those kind of markets get in the mix. And I'll tell you what, they were. Uh, it just goes to show you they they snuck in the playoffs, but then they uh, they played good defense and had good goaltending. And that that seems to be the case in every sport. If you play good defense, you give your chance self a chance to win, and they certainly did that. I got to ask you the uh, the one obvious the talk show host question. That if I don't ask you the question, I lose my membership in the union. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Roger Clemens, you put him in the Hall of Fame or no? You know, it's funny. If that conversation's come up a lot. I, you know, for me personally, yes. But, you know, I understand people's um, trepidation with that or, in some instances, anger with that. I, I guess I look at it this way. You know, we're, we all can speculate about what Roger did or didn't do. Um, and I think you can narrow down at least – an area of suspicion as to when you think Roger may have done certain things or didn't do certain things. And if you look at the body of work before that, I think most people will look at, oh, sometime towards the end in Toronto or maybe when he was a Yankee. For me, you look at his numbers before that, he was a Hall of Fame pitcher. And and that, yep. to me, is what's different about him. And I think Barry